Hi, and welcome to the third video in our Building a Cybersecurity Lab for Beginners series. So what we've done in the first video is we set up our virtual box environment, our networks, and we brought up our attack box with Kali Linux on it. And then in the second video, we set up our Metasploitable 2 Linux machine, which is a Linux uh, machine that is very vulnerable. And in this one, we are going to be setting up our Metasploitable 3 machine, which is a Windows Server 2008 box, which is also very vulnerable. Those two boxes will allow you to test your ethical hacking skills and your penetration, penetration testing skills very well. Now, again, you're only going to want to practice those skills on these machines or machines that you have permission to ethically hack or pen test on because if you do not have permission that is actually illegal now with that disclaimer out of the way let's actually go ahead and let's get started on setting up that metasploitable 3 machine now it is actually quite different than the metasploitable 2 we will actually have to use a tool called vagrant so the first thing that we're actually going to want to do is boot up our favorite browser whether that be edge firefox Chrome, anything that you want to use, since this machine is just a fresh machine here. I just have Edge on it. Um, we are going to then go to our favorite um, search engine, or you can just actually type in the URL vagrantup.com, and that will actually bring you to the developer.hashicorp.com slash vagrant. And then in here, you're going to see an install button. You're going to click on that, and then you're going to select for the operating system that you're on. Now, since we are using a 64-bit AMD Windows, we are gonna be downloading the AMD 64 binary download for Windows. So I actually already have that downloaded on this machine here. So we can actually go ahead and we can close this browser for now. And let's go ahead, let's just open up our uh, Windows Explorer here go into our downloads and we have our Vagrant 2.4.8 and we are actually going to go ahead and we are going to double click on this. Now, if you guys are following along with this video, just be aware that this install will require a reboot here, um, but we're just going to agree to the terms in the license agreement and then click on install. It does require administrative privileges just in case you guys are working on a work computer or anything like that. You do need administrative privileges uh, and then we are going to go through that setup you're going to get this little pop-up here we can just click on yes and then it's going to be doing that install and you're going to see right after this is done it's going to tell us that we need to actually reboot so once that reboot actually initiates i'm going to pause the recording we're going to come back when the computer is actually fully rebooted here so we're just going to wait till this finishes we're going to wait till we get that pop-up this normally doesn't take very long, maybe up to like a minute or so. Uh, so it's not too, too bad. And then once we are actually back up and running, we will follow along these few extra little steps that we need to do to bring up that Metasploitable 3 machine. And you guys will be well on your way. Uh, so here it's just upload, updating the component registration. So like I said, this can take probably like upwards of like a minute, maybe two minutes at most. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just wait for that pop up here. And there is not much else that you guys actually need to do while this is going on because everything everything else after this requires this vagrant setup. So let's just go ahead. I'm actually just going to pause this real quick and we're going to come back when we get that pop up. All right, so here we can actually see that it is completed the Vagrant setup wizard. So we're going to click on finish here. And now we have that pop up of you must restart your system for the configuration changes made to Vagrant to take effect. So we are actually going to go ahead and we're going to click on yes to restart now. And we're going to come back once that computer is actually fully restarted. All right, so that reboot is actually fully complete. So what we can actually do is we could just bring up our virtual box uh, manager here. And what we're actually going to need to do is we're going to need to bring up a command prompt. Now you don't actually need to do this command prompt in administrator. 
Uh, you can just bring up a regular command prompt here. I'm just gonna actually shrink this a little bit. We don't need it that big. All right, so what we're actually going to do is we're gonna type in Vagrant plugin install Vagrant reload. Now this can take like 30 seconds to a minute, doesn't usually take that long. But what we're doing is we are just installing some additional plugins for Vagrant that we need in order to set up our Metasploitable 3 machine. Uh, so this is just going to take a little bit. Now there is actually a problem with one of these plugins. I'm not going to fix it till we get to the point where we actually get the issue because I want to show you guys what the problem is and how to actually fix it uh, because uh, this is something that I got stuck on for quite a little while. Uh, so I want to make sure you guys can actually see how to fix it. Uh, and then the second one we're going to want to do is Vagrant plugin install uh, Vagrant dash VB uh, guest. And that again is just going to take probably another 30 seconds to a minute or so. Uh, this one usually does install two things. I believe it does install like Micro Machine and VB Guest, um, but we'll see them pop up here. Uh, it does install the dependencies that's required at least. Um, but yeah, there you go. And it might not show it for me because I already have it installed because I did install Vagrant on this and then uninstalled it before making this video. And then what we're actually going to do here is we're going to do a Vagrant box add and then we're going to add the rapid 7 slash meta sploitable 3 dash win 2k8 and we're going to hit enter on that and then what it's going to actually give us it's going to give us an option of what virtualization we are actually using so you're going to see it's going to give us the option for VirtualBox, VMware, or VMware Desktop. Now we are using VirtualBox, so I'm gonna put in one here, and we're gonna hit enter. And what it's actually doing, it's actually gonna be downloading the files we need for that VirtualBox. Now you will see here, it does give us an estimated time remaining of how long that download will take. So we're just gonna let that trickle down, and I'm just gonna pause the recording. We're gonna come back once that is all done. All right, so here we can actually see that the download is fully completed here. So what we're gonna wanna do is from our command prompt, we can see that we are in our user folder here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a change directory or cd dot vagrant dot d slash boxes. And that's gonna put us in our dot vagrant dot d directory and then in the boxes directory and then here we can actually do a dir and that's just going to give us everything that's available here so we are going to see that we do have a rapid rapid 7 dash vagrant slash dash metasploitable 3 dash win 2k8 what we're going to do is we're going to do a ren so we're going to be renaming and we are going to rename our rapid seven slash vagrant slash dash metasploitable three dash win 2k8 and we are going to rename that simply here to metasploitable three here and we are going to actually metasploitable three just in case they ever get a new version here we're going to do the win 2k8 at the end here and we're going to hit enter and then if we do the DIR, we can see that we did actually change the name of the directory here, which is perfect. And then we're going to do a vagrant init. And then we're going to do the metasploitable 3-win2k8 here. And we are just going to wait for this command to finish. All right, so it says that the vagrant file already exists in this directory. That's because I had it from before. So let me actually just go ahead and delete that file real quick. You guys won't have to do this um, unless you guys delete and reinstall it, of course. 
So let's go ahead, let's run that Vagrant init Metasploitable 3 dash win 2k8 once again here. You're going to see what that gives us. It gives us a Vagrant file has been placed in this directory. You are ready to Vagrant up your first virtual environment. So let's go ahead and let's use the command Vagrant up and hit enter here. Now this is where we're going to encounter our issue. So let's wait a little bit. This can take a minute or so, but you will actually see that we will get an error message at the end. And it's actually a problem with one of those plugins that we installed. There's an actual error in the code, but let's just wait. Let's see what it gives us. Um, and we should actually see that error pop up very, very shortly. It's right at the end. Um, so it can take maybe a minute or two, like I said, for that error to actually pop up here for us. Um, so let's just go ahead and let's just pause the recording and I'm going to come right back once that error is actually popped up on the screen here. Okay, so it does seem like I didn't get the error message again, but if you guys do get an error message, it's going to give us, give you an output of some code not working. Now, I have had this in the past. What you actually need to end up doing is go to a specific file location here which is actually in the Vagrant D boxes here. I actually have it in here. It's actually in Vagrant D gems here. So if we actually open up a file explorer here, we're gonna open it up just in case you guys actually get the issue on your machine because I have had it happen to me in the past. And I've seen a lot of people have this issue online as well. Um, so let's go into our users, our Jacked programmer, our Vagrant D. It's gonna be in gems. Um, and then actually this could be possibly it because it is 338 instead of 336. Uh, so there might have been an update since then. Uh, but gems, and then we are going to go into the Vagrant VB guest 0320. And then lib, and then Vagrant VB guest here. And then host, and then virtual box RB. Now, if we actually go ahead, edit in Notepad, um, there is a line on line 84. Now, although mine actually did work, what this should actually read is file.exist. If for some reason, um, now I actually have it here as well. Um, so, here it's actually written correctly and then on line 75 it's written correctly but on line 84 it is not written correctly so if for some reason the code ends up going to the guest local iso you will get that error all you need to do is remove that est on the exists to go to exist and that will actually fix it for you i was hoping that after uninstalling it and reinstalling, I would get that same error message. Now you will get this mount disk image that I found that it has not actually impacted me at all. So if we actually just close this command uh, window, we close this code here, we can actually see in our virtual box environment, it is actually running. So what I would like to do here on this point is actually um, let's just go ahead, let's show our virtual machine. What I like to do is I like to close this virtual machine. Uh, let's go ahead, let's just send the shutdown signal here. So we shut it down gracefully. And the only thing that we have left to do is modify the memory or the processor, but definitely modify the network here. So let's go ahead and let's click on settings here. And then in here, you can adjust the memory here. Now I like to put um, four gigs of RAM. Now on this Windows 2008 box, two gigs will probably set you just fine. The CPU, I usually leave it at two here. For the network, we are going to put that on the internal network and we are gonna connect it to the Vuln Labs network. And we're gonna make sure that the promiscuous mode is allow all again to allow us to do that uh, packet capture and traffic sniffing and we are going to go ahead and we're going to click on ok here and we are going to i think you can also 
rename this in the settings as well. Instead of boxes default here, I am going to change this to metasploitable 3 win 2k8 here. And we're going to click on OK and we're going to hit start box. Now they do provide you the administrator password, which is actually just a vagrant here. So we're going to make sure that we can connect to our virtual machine. And what we're also going to do is we're going to start our Kali attack box at the same time to make sure that those two can communicate because you won't be able to do any kind of ethical hacking or anything if your Kali box cannot actually see that machine. All right, so on the uh, Windows box here, let's go ahead and let's send that control alt delete command. And then we should get the two users. Uh, we're gonna click on the administrator user and then that password is vagrant, all lowercase here. And then on our Kali box, let's go ahead and let's log in. And the activate option, we're just going to click on cancel here. And we can just close this Windows Explorer that just pops up here. And we can actually open up a command prompt on that Metasploitable 3 machine. And we are going to do an IF config or sorry, IP config. And we can see that the address that I got is the 172.30.1.24. If we open up a terminal on our Kali box and we do a ping 172.30.1.24, oops, and actually I don't have my numpad enabled here. So ping 172.30.1.24. We can see that the ping does work. And if we go again from our host machine, let's go ahead, let's just shrink this command prompt a little bit. And let's go ping 172.30.1.24. We can see that that ping does not work. So the Kelly box can communicate with that Metasploitable free machine, but the host cannot. So that is perfect. And now we have our two very vulnerable machines, our Kali box that can actually attack those. So we are actually fully set up at this point in terms of a penetration testing cybersecurity lab, you would actually be ready to go and actually explore the Metasploitable 2 and Metasploitable 3 machines. We're gonna take this lab a little bit further in the next videos. We're gonna add some more machines in order to also do some of the blue team activities and kind of train our purple team skills, which is a combination of the red team and blue team. Uh, Cause I do believe that the best way to actually learn red teaming and learn blue teaming is learning both. Um, because it is very hard to be a blue teamer if you don't know how the red team operates and vice versa. It is very hard to be a efficient red teamer if you don't necessarily know how a blue team operates in order to evade what they're setting up or anything like that. And of course, if you are bringing these skills into your work environment, if you're able to simulate some attacks that you're typically not used to simulating, or maybe you've just never seen them, being able to see them because you are fully controlling the environment will, head up, will help you set up those rules on a network to be able to prevent those from happening in your production environment or in your work environment or your home in itself as well, protecting your home network a little bit more. So be sure to stay tuned for that. If you guys wanna see a specific service or a specific machine on this cybersecurity lab, please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to put those in place, especially if it's free or op and open source. That is going to be the easiest for me. If there is a cost associated, it might be a little bit more difficult for me to bring those up. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes. And I will see you guys on that next video.